Hey guys, so this is part C of a series of mini lectures talking about the conservative movement in the United States. In part A, I talked about YAF. In part B, I talked about the moral majority. This is going to focus on neoconservatives. Neoconservatives uh, are part of an intellectual movement started by a fellow named Norman Podhoritz. Podhoritz will uh, publish a magazine called Commentary, which will be very influential in the conservative intellectual movement and what 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 was this all about so the neoconservatives um, were new conservatives think of that prefix neo means new right so new conservatives uh, before being neocons they actually were progressives they were guys who uh, really flirted a bit with communism in the 1930s they uh, like like many Americans thought that that might be a better economic system um, especially as capitalism seemed as if it was collapsing due to the Great Depression but this is the thing they are intellectually incapable of looking at communism and saying, you know, yeah, that's better when Joseph Stalin is killing people. They cannot reconcile the totalitarian nature of this, all of these communist nations that are formed during the Cold War. And so as a result, they will push hard against communism as they form an ideology that says, yeah, you know, actually the United States has this right. Now your book makes a statement about these guys uh, and let me read it really quick because I do want to talk about it. It says they denounced liberals for being too soft on the communist threat abroad and too willing to compromise high standards at home in the face of demands for equality from African Americans, women, and the disadvantaged. Well, when I read that sentence, I thought, huh, that's okay. Well, I don't think that it, it I think it implies something that it probably shouldn't. Neoconservatives were made up of pri primarily Jewish intellectuals, Jewish people in the early 20th century, I think it is fair to say, we're not exactly on an even playing field in American society. So they themselves were a small minority, a small oppressed group. So there is like, they're very sympathetic to oppression. In fact, this is one of the reasons why they hate communism. They see communism as oppressing uh, minority groups as, as killing individuals, actually. And um, so th there seems to me to be an implication in that sentence that they didn't like these, uh, these groups pushing for more rights or something like that. And, and I, I think it's a lot more complicated than that. They did not like radicals. They did not think that things should happen quickly. Um, at times, they... You know, you, and they also thought that communism was the dominant issue. But like Norman Podhoritz uh, advocated for a colorblind society. He just thought that people should be judged as individuals, not as parts of groups. So I, I, I don't, I, like with most things, I'm gonna say it's more complicated than maybe uh, just a one sentence, um, description can really kind of hint at, right? And and by the way, today, neoconservatism is more complicated. In this Cold War, we had this binary between a capitalist society and a communist society. Uh, it was very easy to say white hat, black hat um, kind of thing. I think that many groups did this. Neocons no longer have the communist black hat, but they are still very concerned with foreign policy and the spreading of American ideals and values. And so when you look at neocons in the 21st century, they are a contrast with uh, many conservatives who don't want to get involved anywhere else um, in the world as far as uh, us spreading our thoughts or ideas uh, they would say no you need to stay at home 
And actually, those guys are called paleo conservatives, which is a whole other faction in this, this amazingly diverse conservative tent. Um, but neoconservatives, they're a thing. You've probably heard the word neocon. Many people don't have any idea about their early history. So now hopefully you know a little bit about that. And I'll go on to someone else in the next mini lecture.